What is happening, everybody? Heading down to the shop. Do some work on the Cadillac. We start to. If you haven't seen already, I got my car from my mom's house. Got it up here. Did a fuel pump in it. So now I'm going to start taking it apart, kind of figure out what I want to do to it. I'm not quite 100% sure. Got a few things rolling around in my head, but not really 100% sure on what I'm going to do. But, oh, hello. Are you here to help me build the Cadillac? So I've been needing you. And if you guys haven't followed already, the Cadillac is in the shop. But if you watch the other videos, you probably already know that. I'm going to kind of lift the Cadillac up, start tearing everything out from underneath it. Uh, like I said before, I got a few different ideas rolling around in my head. I'll kind of let you guys know. Maybe you guys can, you know, kind of help me decide. Um, but I'm going to get it stripped down, get it cleaned up, you know, find out what things I don't like and what things need to be addressed. Uh, all in all, the car is pretty good shape. Last time I drove it, uh, no suspension problems whatsoever. Uh, built it for a friend of mine years and years ago. Uh, it doesn't have any reinforcements per se. Uh, I did the front spring pockets because I knew he'd hop the car a little bit. Not too crazy. Uh, I did reinforce the bottom of the belly because I built a coupe for him years ago and uh, he drug the entire belly completely off. It was just a gaping hole in the bottom of the frame. So I did try to kind of, you know, make it a little bit more indestructible for him because he has a tendency of breaking things. But uh, do a partial on this front rear. Um, probably gonna do a long arm kit, or I'm probably gonna build my own. Uh, seen a few guys; they got some kits for sale. Looks like it'd be you know they look nice, look you know well built. Uh, looks like it'd be way easier to put in than just building it. But the only thing is, I don't like the lower control arms hanging out below the body um, or under the doors. I, just, I don't really like that. I want to keep my car as low as I can. Don't want to have any kind of obstructions underneath the car. Um, example, you know, a trailing arm mount. So, I also consider just doing drop mounts on the uppers. Um, maybe get some adjustable lowers. I don't like the wheel being pushed back in the wheel well. Don't really like that style. I want my car to look like a normal car, you know, other than being able to jack up really high in the air. Uh, my buddy's got some 22 inch telescopic cylinders. We've been talking about doing some trading, some wheeling, dealing, do some work on his car for the cylinders. So those are in mind. That's kind of the route I'm planning on going. Um, do a bridge, of course. Not sure if I want to do chains or not. I probably end up wheel doing chains. Uh, but that brings me to my other conundrum is uh, not sure what I'm doing in the trunk. Right now I got five batteries in there. Um, that's how the previous owner wanted me to build it. He wants 60 volts to the nose. So I'm probably going to do, I'm going to do at least six. Uh, after building the Caprice, I miss, you know, a little bit higher voltage. So I'm going to do that. Um, got my street charger. Um, depending on when I upload this, you may or may not know about some street chargers, uh, my liking for them. But uh, got my street charger in this car. I uh, talked to them the company street charger they said they can up my voltage on the charger so if i decide to go with a higher voltage which i have uh, i just sent it to them they can rework it for higher voltage so that's a good thing um, but that kind of brings me to my next thing um, really only need six batteries going to the nose i might do seven i haven't quite decided yet but pretty much anything after that is just going to be dead weight uh, dead weight and ex uh, additional cost of batteries you know, normally you'd run them in parallel, that way you have basically more reserve time. You can you know, you have a longer charge uh, using parallel batteries instead of series batteries. But with a street charger, I don't really need that. Uh, I guess the only thing is uh, it would maybe make the charger have to charge less. Uh, I need to call street charger, talk to them. Uh, very, very knowledgeable guys. Uh, I've sat on the phone with uh, Bill for an hour at a time. Uh, dude's really cool. He'll help you out as much as he can. Uh, very, very knowledgeable and very willing to share the knowledge, which is a good thing, especially when you're messing with batteries and electric and stuff that can go wrong. Uh, it can be a big problem. So I'm going to build this saw right here. Whoop. Whoop. Right there. I'm going to build that. I've needed it for a little while. It'll make building stuff a lot easier as far as fabrication goes. Save time. Overall, better result. So we'll build that, and I'm going to jack the Cadillac up start tearing it apart. So we'll bring you back then. There 
it is. It's all right for the price I paid for it. I do have to do some modifications before I fire it up. One thing I didn't too much like, you can see in there, the shaft is sitting on the guard. And I got the take up all loosened up on the motor. That belt's still pretty tight. So I'm gonna notch that. Unfortunately, I gotta take everything back apart. But you know, some people will let it run, but what's gonna happen is it's gonna put a lot of extra strain on that bearing and eventually make it go bad. So I'm gonna take that back off, notch it with probably a burr tool. Get a little bit more clearance in there. The take up bolt there, I'm probably gonna cut a little bit. Because right now the belt is so tension that it's about to pop. There's plenty up here. And we're hitting the motor, so I can't loosen it anymore. So I'll probably cut that off with a grinder wheel, cutoff wheel. That will give some relief up here. They're pretty easy fixes though. Shouldn't be that big of a deal. I wish I would have seen uh, that one beforehand. Because now I gotta take everything back apart. But ain't that big of a deal. It's five screws. So, I'm going to take that apart, put it back together, run it, see how it goes, kind of set it up, make sure the blade's true, and it'll be ready to work. Modifications complete. Got a little bit of relief in there. Yeah, otherwise, that shaft will be rubbing up against this, making a bunch of noise. Got some slack in the belt, so I'm going to have to tension it back up a little bit more. Cut my bolt off there a little bit. So, pretty happy with it. Now we'll run it and see what it does and make minor adjustments from there. So, <laughs> oh, Clyde. So now that I've procrastinated the good weather away, uh, it's got to where it's cold now, which isn't that bad. But i got to wait till like 9, 10 o'clock to get started. I usually like getting started earlier than that. So I'm not wasting the day away. But it is what it is. I uh, decided I'm going to build long arms for the Cadillac. I'm not going to go like extremely long arms. I want everything to stay tucked up under the car because I like my car to be a lowrider still. So I'm going to try and finagle that to where I can get the best of both worlds, have it low and a decent lockup. I'm not going for any kind of world record lockup or anything. Yeah, what he said. So. Gonna see what we can do. Uh, I got some drawings laid out on the floor. Kind of got a little bit of measurements. Uh, I'm gonna build some mock-up stuff, and I'm gonna start tearing everything out underneath with a little bit of motivation from Clyde, and see what we got going on there. So one of the first obstacles I see, we're underneath the car. That's our lower trailing arm. I'm gonna move it this way. Um, I think it's seven inches. I'll have to double check my measurements. It's, I laid it all out like a week ago and I haven't touched the car since. But the plan is move this out here. So I'm going to build a box coming out here and gusset it. But that's going to be a problem there. Um, might look into just bypassing it and putting the filter further back. I also thought about putting it inside the frame. Opening there, sliding it down in, drilling a hole in the top of the frame up there. Routing my fuel line down inside the frame and connect it in there, uh, which may still be an idea. I was thinking about maybe reinforcing that. Not 100% sure on I know it needs it. Thought about putting a plate on the outside and a plate on the bottom. Because it will be three-wheel in the car, so I'm going to put a bridge in there. But also thought about making a little access panel that will bolt in. It will be some strength, but it won't be as strong as if it was fully welded, obviously. But I can access that, pull my fuel filter out if need be and service it, but not 100% sure on that yet. Uh, the easy part will be putting a fuel filter in there because it clicks. The hard part will be getting out because you have to unclick it. So, not 100% sure on that, but I'm not going to let that hold me back. So, start tearing things out. You got an angle finder on the pinion. Normally, normally I'd put it on the front of there, on the actual pinion itself. But I got dry shaft and everything in here still. But the car has factory arms on it right now. It rides good, drives good, no vibrations, unless it's locked up all the way. And it's factory arms up there. 
So I'm going to try and keep the geometry best I can. So I'm basically setting a baseline of what it's at right now, sitting on jack stands. That way I can try and mimic it. Uh, once I extend my arms, hopefully it'll be close. I am going to make them adjustable. But for right now, it's just going to all be solid arm uh, until I can find some adjusting screws. I am currently looking for those. Hopefully I don't have to build them because I'm not very good on a lathe, but eventually I can build it. But that's what we're looking at. Uh, about three degrees pointed up. So that would be a little baseline for me. That way later on I can remember how to do it. Or remember what it's at. Got the fuel tank out. Kind of feel like I've been here once before. But now we can move on to further things. I'm planning on plating the inside of the frame. Uh, probably bumper to... Uh, maybe the cross member may cut it out a little bit further, go for, further forward up. Haven't decided on that yet. But it does give you a lot more room without the fuel tank there. So I'm onto the Cadillac. I've been hacking on the rear end a pretty good bit, or rear suspension, I should say. Uh, I got it mocked up so far, pretty happy with everything. Um, started on the passenger side. Kind of left the driver's side intact with the factory arms. That way I can somewhat keep the factory geometry, uh, at least make it easier. Uh, could have welded the rear end of the frame. I don't really like that. I mean, it's good on a truck. It's easy to get to to cut it back off, but on a car it's a little bit more difficult. So I'm kind of just trying to rely on measurements. So I pulled my measurements from the axle to the back bumper. They're the same on both sides, which it should be. So like I said, I left the driver's side alone. I cut up the passenger side, extended everything, kind of figured out where everything would clear. Uh, so far it looks good. I've cut the frame a little bit. Wasn't really too much wanting to do that, but I'm plating it anyway, so it ain't gonna be a big deal. But so far the passenger side is good. Uh, went to extend everything on the driver's side, extend that same amount of uh, distance. Got everything put up and something seems off. Um, I measured from the bumper to here and we got a, a variation. So I'm gonna use my plumb bob and see where my difference is because uh it's not really a whole lot of stuff to measure off of on the car you know the floorboards are kind of round you know they have different shapes so there isn't really a good measuring point uh, where i put my mounts on the frame i measured back from under the doors where it's kind of a c uh, measure from the open spot back to one of the holes in the frame and kind of got you know some bearings there on where i'm at those are in the same spot uh but i think it is I don't think the arms or the mounts are parallel. I think one's tweaked back a little bit. So I'm going to drop some lines down on the ground with a plumb bob and see if my uh, theory is correct. Hopefully it is because that would make it easy for me. Um, you know, I just pull the arm back towards the front of the car a little bit and it should take everything back into perspective. So we'll drop the plumb bob down. I've showed it once before on the Caprice video. But, you know, maybe this will give you a better idea of actually laying stuff out on the floor and kind of trying to figure stuff out. So this is kind of more of what I'm talking about here. This is the passenger side. It's kind of hard to get a really good angle on there to, for video, but I did my best. Uh, the factory arm, you know, this is all mock-up. So take that in consideration. Uh, this is not the final product by any means. I just want to get something to get a general measurement. I'm going to build them adjustable. I'm actually waiting on my parts to come in to make them adjustable. So this is going to be just scrap, trash. Um, build it. haven't quite decided whether square tubing or round tubing yet. Um, kind of in the air on that. But this is where the stock control arms were. And I moved everything forward because I extended my upper arms also. And also keep in mind, this is all just mock-up purposes uh, these are not final brackets by any means god lord so we got everything extended uppers lowers uh pinion angle still in the same area that's what i was aiming for it's all still at the factory well i wouldn't say the factory but uh when i had the car all the way down this is where my pinion angle was and the car drove very nicely so i'm trying to retain that so everything is looking good so far so when you're building something that's going to nothing, something that's an air, you don't really have a whole lot to measure off of. Uh, it's good to get some good baseline numbers of where everything needs to be. Uh, your rear end, it needs to be in a certain spot. So before taking everything apart, it's a good idea to get 
you know, some baseline measurements. Uh, obviously, you want it centered left to right, and you want it in the correct position forward to backwards. Uh, I mean, unless you're building like a circus hopper or something like that, then it doesn't really matter. But if you want to drive your car, uh, it's good to put it in the same spot where it was, or at least square uh, to the front wheels. So what I did, took me a measurement from where my trailing arm mounts to my axle. It's a good flat spot. Uh, measured it straight back to the bumper. Another good flat spot. So I wrote that measurement down before I tore anything apart. That way, as I'm building my arms, I can make sure that the rear end stayed where it's supposed to be. So I built my, built my passenger side, got it all mounted, got it where I like it, double checked all my measurements, everything was good. So I cut everything apart and started on my, my driver's side and got all my stuff ready. Ugh. Went to go put my arm in and it wasn't quite where I wanted it to be. So I had to double back and see what had changed. Um, you know, make sure the rear end hadn't moved or me rolling around in the car, bumped the stands or it, I think it was on a jack at the time so it couldn't move around. So checked all my measurements and they're where they need to be. So that kind of tells me that the front mount more than likely is tweaked a little bit. So I'm gonna drop my lines down, uh, kind of like I explained in the Caprice video. I'm gonna run a plumb bob, put me a mark on the ground, and then run a line across. And I'm gonna do the same thing here in the back because the back is a fixed measurement. You know, we know this from the factory, as long as the car wasn't wrecked, which this one hasn't been, we know that's a good measurement. So I'm gonna drop a, a line down Actually, two lines, one on each side, and then I'm gonna run a chalk line connecting the two together. And then I'm gonna do the same thing up front. I'm gonna, my mounts are probably about 10 inches wide, I believe, coming off of the frame. So I'm gonna drop a line from the inside, and then, well, I should say the outside, I'm gonna drop a line from the inside, drop them straight down, and I'm gonna draw a straight line. That way I can measure forward to back to see if that arm is kicked in, kicked out, or if it's parallel where it needs to be. Because uh, like I said, there's not really a whole lot to measure to under there. You got your floorboard, which isn't really the greatest thing to measure from. You don't know if the body is sitting square on the frame, and it's just kind of a, a funky shape thing to measure from. You know, For one, the floorboard comes in. Uh, for two, there's uh, raised areas and dimpled in areas to kind of make reinforcements so not a good place to measure from so we're gonna drop some lines down on the ground that way we have hard measurements to go to all right after playing around my shop doors for about 10 minutes trying to get the lighting where you can see it i got it so much close but as i was saying what we're gonna do drop the supply bob down from the rear axle just like so string broke. Well, we'll try that again. Okay, now we got that all fixed. Got it back up there. We're gonna let our plumb bob settle. It's pretty well settled right now. We're gonna make a mark on the floor. Not really worried about left and right. We're worried about front and back. So like I said, we're gonna draw a line across this back to mimic the where the bumper is at. That way we can make sure everything up there is squared to back here. All right, now we'll do the same over here on the driver's side. Then we'll run a straight edge on the floor, actually probably a chalk line, pop a line, and then work our way up to the front. far left and right you go how far apart you are obviously the further the better because you're gonna have a more true line but we're not worried about this distance we're worried about this distance so we'll throw us another mark as soon as this thing stops moving all right now we got two points of reference we can run us a straight line across and that will literally be like drawing a mark or pulling a measurement 
from up here. We're just dropping it down. That way we can get away from everything. And just in case you didn't know, uh, obviously you want to draw or you want to pull your string down from the same part on both sides. You know, you don't want one back here and one back here because that'll give you probably a quarter inch difference in measurements. But also, you don't want anything touching the string. You know, from there all the way down, you want just a free fall. You know, you don't want to make sure. Obviously, I use a chalk line. Most people don't use don't use a chalk line, but I like to be able to roll it up. But you don't want anything touching. You know, like say your wrench went the other way. I got my measurements, so I don't have to worry about it. But you don't want that happening. Or that happening. Because that'll throw you off. And it'll take forever to get lined up. And it'll be wrong. So don't do that. Just make sure that it, it free suspends and you'll be able to get a get a good measurement. But there's our marks. The crow's feet, that way you know where you're measuring to. If you draw one line, you'll say, you'll come back and say, hmm, did I mean that one or that one? So do a crow's foot is more precise and you'll always know where you measured from. So we'll snap us a line going across here and then we'll move up to the front. All right, so now we're gonna pop our line and running a chalk line by yourself is kind of a pain, but it's totally doable. Uh, as you see, I got a spring holding that. So, totally doable by yourself. Just a little bit more aggravating. And there we have a good line. As I said in the Caprice video, a good way to make sure those lines don't get rubbed off, uh, put some hairspray on them. That's the cheapest, easiest way. Most people have it. Uh, most people, girlfriends, at least. No. Yeah, most people have it. Um, or clear spray paint. They make a specific spray paint that you can use, but that's, that's way overpriced. I would just use regular old dollar store clear spray paint. I'm probably not gonna do that, and I'm probably gonna regret it later, but we're gonna play the cards how they are and see how everything goes. But there's our back bumper mark. So that's a straight square mark, square with the car going forward and backwards. So now we're gonna go up front, do the exact same thing and drop some more lines and see what's off. All right, so this is our driver's side mount. And this is the outside of the frame, well, the outermost part of the frame. Uh, and this is the inside more towards the drive shaft. What I was gonna do is drop a line from here down on the ground and a line from here down on the ground and do the same on the other side and connect my furthest points together. And that way I could tell if this was in or out, but I've got a jack stand my way, so. That's why I am kind of leaning more towards that back line at the back bumper. Because I can drop the line from my most inward position down to the ground, and then I can measure to the back of the car. And if this side and the passenger side are different, I know what I needed to do to correct that. So we've got our marks lined out up there on both sides. And our tape measure back. <clears throat> and in order to make sure that we're measuring straight, because if your tape measure goes that way or that way, that's going to be a different measurement. I lay my square down on my bumper line. That way I can make sure my tape measure is going straight where I need it to go. And with that being done, I've got the driver's side done already. This is the passenger side, and I found some discrepancies. So this is the driver's side, and this is the passenger side. From the backmost part, or the rearmost part, of the uh, lower trailing arm to the back bumper at 76 inches. The driver's side from the back most part to the bumper, I got 75 and a half. So that tells me I need to move this arm here a little bit. It's leaned back too far towards the rear end. So I'm going to shorten this side of the uh, mount up so I can pull it forward towards the front of the car, making these distances the same. And that should fix my problem. So we got our mount reattached on there. Got it pushed forward a half inch. And now we'll hook our control arms up, measure our rear end again to make sure it's where it needs to be, and see if everything fits a little bit better. So here is the crude aftermath. Now keep in mind, as I said before, this is a strictly mock-up. Uh, 
got our mount on up front up there up there got it all figured out right <clears throat> got lines laid on the floor and this is what it is when I let it down uh, under just the weight of the rear end I've got 22 inches of travel which is perfect because that's what I was planning on going with is 22 inch telescopic cylinders I even checked my side to side and I'm within an eighth inch uh, from fully collapsed to fully extended which is perfectly fine with me my pinion angle isn't exactly where I'd like it to be it could be better so I'm gonna extend my uppers just a little bit more uh, once I had remounted all my stuff and got everything where I wanted it I measured the axle again and it was it got bumped a little bit so I got it all centered back up and then my pinion angle actually went down just a little bit from where it was so once I extend the uppers it'll bring the pinion angle back up to where I need it to be I think it'll be a-okay the only thing I'm not happy with kind of not really the whole reason I did this but one of the reasons I did this was to try and get away from having to have a slip yoke that is not gonna happen unfortunately um, kind of got to take the good with the bad I guess on that but that's the main reason I did this is I want the car to lay low and I don't want nothing hanging out below the bottom except the mufflers and I really don't want those hanging out either I might see if I can push them up a little bit more I still got probably a half inch more to go up maybe a little bit more I'm being lazy right now and I don't feel like throwing a block under the axle so I'm just going with what it is but I'm pretty happy where it is after further inspection the mufflers can go up a good bit so I'll definitely be doing that and my side to side right there the distance between my frame and my axle it's fairly consistent uh, it's about the same as when it's up, about an eighth inch out which I'm pretty happy with that uh, you know they're just factory bushings in there right now they are super worn out bolts are mostly hand tight that one there doesn't have a nut on it so I did cheat on that one but the rest of it is, is working out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, so now I got my measurements. This will probably be where I'm going to end it today. But I got my measurements. So that's good. That's pretty decent angle for three wheeling. And this is, you know, I've got swivel bushings for the uppers. And like I said, my arms are going to be adjustable. So they'll pivot as well. Jacked up really easily. Nothing was in a bind, so that's always good. I think that'll work out just the way I want it to. So at least I have some measurements to go off of now. And mainly the reason I just mocked it all up like this is because I was kind of concerned it wouldn't even work. So this is probably where I'm going to end the video today. I got a small bit accomplished really for what I got going on. Uh, Pretty happy with the way everything's traveling. Nothing's binding up. Um, the the measurement I had for the cylinders that was just the factory. Well, I wouldn't really say factory. That was just the droop from the weight of the rear end. So the hydraulic cylinders will push it further. Uh, once I extend the upper trailing arms, that will push it further down. This is kind of just like I said, trying to make sure my idea worked. Um, I haven't really seen too many long arm kits that don't hang below the frame and I just don't like the look of it. Most of them sit really high, you know, stock or higher. And, you know, there's a reason for that. The arms intersect. And if you set it too low, the arms are going to hit each other. And that was kind of the problem I was fighting on this, trying to make sure that that didn't happen. Um, but I'm pretty happy with it. You know, I, really don't have any complaints other than the slip yoke that's the only downside which that really isn't that big of a deal i mean i kind of knew i was gonna have to do that regardless but i got my hard measurements now so as soon as my parts get here i can start building my trailing arms and kind of going from there uh, i guess until the meantime i'm gonna start plating the frame i kind of went about this backwards i uh, should have plated the inside of the frame first but I didn't really want to get too carried away. I guess it really wouldn't matter if I did get too carried away and play the frame. You know, if my idea didn't want to work or didn't work, uh, I didn't really, you know, want to invest a bunch of time and money, obviously, in it to find out it didn't work. But it does. So now I get to rip everything out, plate over it, kind of remeasure everything again. I mean, really, all I got to do is uh, take three sixteenths off of each bracket, and it should be pretty close to where it is. 
But like I said, main main operation of this was to make sure my idea would work, make sure nothing would bind up, make sure nothing would hit, and I've cleared all those. So I'm, I'm very happy with that. Other than that, uh, please like, subscribe, share. Uh, let me know if you got any better ideas or you do anything differently. Uh, still, I'm kind of torn on doing round tubing or square tubing. Probably going to end up doing round tubing because round tubing is stronger. Um, I got swivel joints for the upper um, trail and arm bushings. I'm going to reinforce the axle and they're heavily reinforce the ears. But other than that, uh, I guess I will see you on the next go around. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully, if you got a big body, uh, I'm going to put up some measurements. That way, if anybody else wants to do this, I kind of did the hard work for you. So, till the next time, we'll see ya. What are you doing? Get out of here. Go. Oh. You know how you came in, you go out that way. Ah, oh, dang, can't have nothing nice. Oh, you're off the porch, too. Go the other way. Good chicky chicky. Come on. Go. Don't make me punt you. Go. 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 I guess I just use a broom. Come on. There you go. You got the idea. No. You can't go that way. You can't go that way. No, don't go that way either. Good chickies. Good shot. Got away free. It lives to die another day.